stars. They're part of space, and sometimes we want to photograph them, but sometimes they just get in the way of what we want to photograph. And for astrophotographers, that creates a perpetual conundrum. What in the sky do we do with stars? Some astrophotographers find their solutions among scripts, and there are a number of scripts that help one to deal with stars. The idea being to basically luminance balance them without losing their coloration so that we can add them back to an image in a way that they do not overwhelm whatever interesting structure might be between the stars that we are trying to photograph. Other astrophotographers just pull them out of an image with a tool such as Star Exterminator and do a quick light balance on them and throw them back in and I guess in kind of a Hail Mary fashion, hope for the best. For quite a long time, I've had a basic method for dealing with stars that I found to be generally satisfactory. I pulled the stars from the RGB plates with a star exterminator, used the screen transfer function to light balance them, subdued them slightly with the curves tool using an inverse C, and then put them back into an image at the end of non-stellar development. By and large, I found for me that created satisfactory results. But not 100% satisfactory. For one, pulling the RGB stars gave me stars with good color, but RGB is only one third as efficient at capturing photons as luminance, and so the dimmer stars within an image were underwhelming or entirely lost. Now, it was easy enough to pull the stars from the luminance side of the image and add them back, but adding the luminous stars to the RGB stars can create stars that are overwhelming. And while the effect of the luminance plate on the RGB star plate can be mitigated through use of the opacity tool, just making the luminance plate somewhat transparent, the more luminance plate was added to the image, the more washed out the star color became. A couple months ago though, I accidentally stumbled upon the solution to that problem. I was intending to run a high frequency separation on a combined LRGB plate for further developing, and through a simple mouse slip, ended up separating the high and low frequency information from a luminance star plate. Before I had even realized what I had done, I had turned off the low frequency components where light, shadow, and color is to be found, and suddenly found myself staring at a bright, sparkling, sharp presentation of stars where the color was preserved, but the dimmer stars were also revealed. And that happy moment of serendipity ultimately culminated in the development of the Great Stars Evolve technique and the creation of this video. The technique is simple and straightforward. We'll begin in PixInsight. Now, I work in LRGB, but this technique will also work whether you shoot one-shot color, narrowband, RGB, or LRGB. Because I work in LRGB, I'm starting off with a separate RGB plate and a luminance plate, which is top left. I'm going back to the original RGB master that I made after combining the discrete RGB components previously in developing. And I've cloned the RGB master, which you can see on the screen in front of you now. The reason I've cloned it is I use a different stretching method for the starless image, a technique that I call the Perfect Histograms Evolved method. Because the non-stellar component of an image is typically dimmer than stars, it gets a bit more aggressive of a histogram stretch. I'll use a new stretching method for the stars component of the image, a technique I call Great Stars Evolved. It's very simple. On the right I've opened the histogram. I'm going to drag the middle icon, which controls the pitch of the light curve of this image. And I'm going to grab that middle icon and drag it to the right side of the light curve. You can barely see it, it's way over on the left. Then I'm going to grab the left icon, which establishes the black point, and place it just to the left of the light curve. Notice the middle icon moves when you move the left icon. With the left icon in place, I'll put the middle icon just to the right of the right side of the light curve. Now I'm going to zoom in vertically to 20 so that we get a better view of the base of the light curve and zoom in horizontally to broaden our view of the light curve. I'll just place my mouse cursor on the scroll bar and use the mouse wheel to scroll the light curve back into view. And I'm going to place the left icon right at the edge of the blue side of the light curve, right where the light curve begins to significantly lift away from the bottom. It doesn't matter whether it's the red, green, or blue part of the light curve that's lifting away. Place the left icon where the outermost part of the left side of the light curve begins to lift from the bottom. To help you determine this place, zoom in your vertical to 20, and then scroll to the base of the light curve. It'll help you to see it better. Now, we're going to place the middle icon on the outside curve of the right side of the light curve. And, same as on the left side, right where the light curve begins to lift away from the bottom. In the preview window on the left, you can see the effects of this on the image, though honestly I found the preview window is almost unnecessary because this technique is so reliable. Now, we're going to close the preview window and apply this histogram stretch to the RGB image. Now, with the RGB image stretched, we'll run the denoiser. 
In my case, I use RC Astro's Noise Exterminator. I still find it to be the best denoising tool out there. Once the denoising tool has worked its magic, we'll run the Star Exterminator on the image and extract the stars that have been made using this new Stars Evolve stretch. When the stars are extracted, I'll save the RGB star plates as a 16-bit lossless TIFF to add back to the image later. Now we're going to operate on the luminance plates using the same methodology. As before, I'm going to clone the luminance image, because the star plates will get the new stars evolved histogram stretch, and the starless component to the image will get my usual stretch, the perfect histograms evolve stretch. Now, let's stretch the star plates histogram using the same technique we used for the RGB part of the image. I'll drag the tab from the luminance clone image into the view slot to the histogram tool so that we can see its histogram as we work. Next, I'll turn off the screen transfer function, which will darken the image to the point that it becomes invisible, but it will allow us to see the effect of the stars evolve stretch as we work. Then I'll drag the middle icon to the right side of the luminance light curve, thereby stretching it. I'll scroll the vertical zoom up to 20, and then scroll down on the view screen so we can see the base of the light curve, and then place the left icon, which establishes the black point, just at the edge of the left side of the luminance light curve, right where the light curve rises from the base, establishing that as our new black point. And just as before, I'll grab the middle icon and drag it to the outside of the right side of the light curve, right where the light curve begins to rise from the base. And this establishes the degree of our stretch. Then I'll close the preview window and apply the histogram stretch to the image. Next, we'll run the denoiser on the image and then the star exterminator, and the new star plates will be saved as a 16-bit lossless TIFF. For the next part of the process, we need to switch over to a layer-based photo editor that can do compositing. My preferred layer-based photo editor is Affinity Photo 2. Now, here is the fully developed LRGB starless components of the image. We're going to put the stars back into the image now, beginning with the RGB plate. I have the snap tool turned on so that the new plate will snap into place. You'll notice the RGB plate has a slightly different crop than the starless plate, but it's no big deal. I've already pre-aligned the star plates using the star alignment tool in PixInsight. So I'll place the RGB star plates over the starless plate and they'll snap together because I have the snap tool turned on up here. This perfectly aligns the RGB star plate to the starless image. Now I'm going to change the composite mode of the RGB star plate to screen so that the stars add their light to the starless image below. Now, I'm going to add the luminance star plate. I'll just drag it into the image, and it'll show up as a new layer on top of the RGB star layer. Now, I'll use the frequency separation tool to separate the luminance star plates into its high and low frequency components. The low frequency contains light and shadow, and the high frequency contains the detail, the stars themselves. The components have been separated. We don't need the low frequency component, so I'll delete it. Now, the image looks awful, doesn't it? That's because the high frequency components of the luminance star image is presently set to the linear light composite mode, which only works well with its native low frequency component. I'll switch the high frequency composite mode to soft light, and then the high frequency information from the luminance star plates will softly and gently be added to the RGB star plate below. And this yields a much more visually appealing star plate, where the high frequency information from the luminosity star plate reveals dim stars that were not well captured or were even not shown at all in the RGB star plate, and where the appearance of the visible stars has been sharpened, rounded, and smoothed out by the addition of the luminous star's high frequency information. I'm going to merge the high frequency information from the luminous star plate to the RGB star plate now. I'll just select both layers, then right click on one of the layers and click Merge Selected. This will composite all the information together into a single new star plate. Then I'll quickly name this plate Stars Evolved to let me know that it's done. Merging the star plates together makes it very easy to make final adjustments to the star plate. For example, I could open a simple brightness tool on the star plate and decrease the brightness, making the stars more of a background component to the image to help draw attention to the beautiful Witch's Broom Nebula. Or if I don't like that, I can use the Curves tool to increase the gamma, which darkens the space and emphasizes the sparkle of the stars. I'll just make the Brightness tool invisible, select a Curves tool, and open it within the star plate so that it only affects the star plate, not the starless components of the image. And in the Curves tool, draw out a slight negative C on the curve. This introduces a little more gamma into the star plate. Hmm, I rather like the appearance of this, so I'm going to make this my final image. 
Let's compare this to my former method where I used PixInsight's screen transfer function to apply a stretch to the RGB stars, which were then the only stars that I applied to the image in order to best preserve the star's color. The screen transfer function RGB only stars are on the left and the great stars evolved method is on the right. You will notice the GSC stars have a more natural look with more varied brightness like the stars of the night sky. Let's have a closer look. Notice in particular the large orange star here. On the left, it has harder boundaries and it's somewhat fringed in red. On the right, it has more pleasing to the eye soft boundaries and there is no fringing. And the same for the smaller orange star beside it. The Great Stars Evolved method introduces stars back into the image in a gentler, more natural fashion. Let's go down into the left and take a look at the stars in an area that's relatively clear of dust and gas. Take a look at the stars in the small zone of nebulosity. The appearance of stars within the nebulosity, here on the right, is distinctly sharper than the appearance of stars within the nebulosity on the left. And all the stars throughout the region that have been processed with the Great Stars Evolved method present a more graceful transition from the bright core to the outer edges of the star, while at the same time not being over bright or perhaps even somewhat blown out in the cores of the stars, which we see in the STF RGB star side. And when we study the overall presentation of stars throughout the entire image, we can see that all the stars are captured and portrayed in the Great Stars Evolved method. But their appearance is gentler, they have more varied luminosity and color, they look, overall, more natural, and are less inclined to draw attention away from our subject of interest, this fragment of the Witch's Broom Nebula. The Great Stars Evolved method is definitely going to be my new technique for adding stars to all my images. The results are just better, it's subtle, but significant. And it's in fact how I've added the stars to my last several images. I wanted to test it on a variety of images with different levels of luminosity and different characteristics before I actually made a video of it. And in every case, I've been very happy with it. So this absolutely will be my new method for adding stars. And if like me, you prefer to avoid reliance on scripts because sometimes script makers quit making scripts and they're no longer supported and you can no longer use them and then one day they don't work anymore and then you're stuck or you prefer to add stars to your images yourself because you know that when you do them yourself, you have direct control over each step of the process so you can make the final image look exactly like you want it, or you just prefer the more hands-on approach of doing it yourself, then for you, the Great Stars Evolved method, I think will work well. It's a simple technique, extract your stars, and if you happen to be working in LRGB, extract the RGB stars separately from the luminance stars, Use the somewhat less aggressive Stars Evolve stretch on both the Luminance and the RGB stars. And then, at the end of developing, add them back to the image, first by adding the RGB stars via a screen composite mode, and then by running frequency separation on the Luminance star plate, deleting the low frequency information and soft light compositing the high frequency Luminance star plate onto the RGB stars. Once you have the RGB star plate and the Luminance star plate's high frequency information in the image, select both layers and merge them together and then you can make any adjustments you may desire, such as using the Levels tool to change their Gamma, the Brightness tool just to decrease brightness a little, or the Curves tool to constrict them a little bit more. Though of course, if you're shooting with a one-shot color camera or an RGB or narrowband, you won't get the benefits of the Luminance High Frequency Information. You'll get the benefits of the first step of the process, the more forgiving GSE stretch, that makes a non-aggressive capture of all the information within the light curve, portraying the stars in totality, yet gently. But without the additional high frequency information, you won't get the subtle but significant additional tightening of the stars, nor the restoration of dimmer stars that may not appear in RGB, narrowband, or one-shot color data. But the Great Stars Evolve stretching method will nonetheless give you good stars that portray better color and a wider variety of luminosity within the image so that they will still look more natural. Thanks for watching, and let me know if that helps. Now, get out there and shoot the sky.